For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you all for watching our YouTube Mass. Today's Mass is being offered for Becky Ross, Mark Duffy, Johnny Pellegrin, Wanda Newman, Raymond Neaton, John and Sonny Belkis, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Carrie Staunton, Greg and Katie Nolte, Tommy Schaefer, Carmelie Morrow, David and Penny Trutel, Joseph Trahan, and Catherine Marie Fayette. So to prepare ourselves to worship God, let's invite Jesus into our heart, ask his mercy and forgiveness as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Catherine Marie Thayer, Joseph Trahan, David and Penny Trutel, Carmelie Morrow, Tommy Schaefer, Greg and Kitty Nolton, Nolte, Carrie Stanton, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, John and Sonny Belkis, Raymond Neaton, Wanda Newman, Johnny Pellegrin, Mark Duffy, and Becky Ross. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgah on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste, Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one is called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. 
The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King of endless glory. I will get up and go to my Father and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed his parable. A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off for a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance in the life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who made him, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine, and he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hard workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servant, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fat of calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with the feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the elder son had been out in the field, and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has gone to the fat calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served him, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when this son of yours returns, you swallowed up your, swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost 
and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of salvation is God's love story for human beings. And if we lost all the Bible except this parable, we would have the essence of the good news. This is the parable of the forgiving father with two bad sons. The first son originally represented the tax collectors and the sinners. And the older son, the scribes and the Pharisees. But really these two sons represent each of us. They're about us as human beings. And the youngest son didn't want God in his life. He wanted no restrictions. He wanted his father God dead. Give me my inheritance and give me it now. Don't wait for me to die. So the father out of love divided up his property, liquidated everything, and gave half to the son. And he went off and squandered everything. He was in dire need. For a Jewish boy hurt in swine is the lowest of the low. But the good news is, he came to his senses and came back to his father. That's so important. Denial is one of the biggest issues for human beings. We're in denial that we have a problem. This man came to his senses and decided to go back home. And by coming to his senses, it was, he was on the road to hope. And that's what we have to do as human beings. Admit to ourselves that we are sinners in need of a Savior and come back to God. And every time we come back to God, God throws us a party. Look what he says. He was a far way off and he was filled with compassion and he embraced him and kissed him and kill, killed the fat calf. God celebrates every time we come back in confession. God celebrates every time we come back to him. And what's the human reaction often to a sinner repenting? The scribes and the Pharisees, the elder son, they were self-righteous. They didn't do anything wrong, but they didn't do anything right either. They neglected to enter the feast, and they neglected to celebrate the love of God. They went by the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is summed up in John 10.10. 10. Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. And an abundant life is a life lived in love with God. God loves us and we're invited to love him. And reconciliation is God's way of renewing his friendship with us and wiping out our blunders. When you look at the Bible, the greatest people were the greatest sinners at times. Look at Moses committed murder. David committed murder and adultery. Peter denied Jesus three times. Paul was killing the Christians and they are the great people of the Bible. The only one that I feel really bad about is Judas. He denied Christ. If he had asked for forgiveness, he would have been forgiven. But he despaired of forgiveness. He despaired and he committed suicide. We should never despair of God's forgiveness, but come to God in confession, confess our sins, and experience the love and the mercy of God. God is not concerned about our past, God wants to wash away our sins. And on Easter Monday, the Monday of Holy Week, we will have several priests here for confession. So now is a good time to start preparing. Google an examination of conscience and try and get rid of the garbage. If we don't take out the garbage from your house, it stinks up the place. Likewise, if we don't get the garbage out of our hearts, it stinks us up. So this is a great time to prepare for spring cleaning, to get rid of the garbage and come back to God who will throw a party for us. Amen. Now we'll have the creed.
I believe in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the parishioners of Boston and Trinity, for Kerry Stanton, Reggie Kizinolti, Tommy Schaefer, Carmelie Morrow, David and Penny Trutel, Joseph Trahan, Catherine Marie Fayard, Becky Ross, Mark Duffy, Johnny Pellegrin, Wanda Newman, Raymond Leonton, Jonathan Sonny Belkas. And for the people in the Ukraine, for all the sick, for all the people who ask for special prayers, let's present our needs in faith. For nations where people suffer discrimination on account of their sex, race, age, or class, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of Ukraine and Russia to know God's truth and peace and be transformed by his Holy Spirit to seek and lead their countries in the way of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have responded to the call to share their gifts in this year's Catholic Sharing Appeal, that their generosity may be rewarded with the growth, love, and joy that giving generously brings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That during the season of Lent, our discipleship quads may look with anticipation toward the resurrection as they look forward to a new life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the dead in our parish and all our families, especially Louise Turpel, Teresa Dito, Vince Corona, Ray Meekase, Mark McDonald, Paul Melanson, Pete Crane, Jeffrey Bourgeois. May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your unconditional love. May we use this time of Lent to come back to you through prayer, fasting, and works of mercy as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith, 
and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin to the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing in your song and adoration and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And those of you watching just want you to know we're praying the first Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation, if you're following it in a missal. And today a quote from St. Kateri Tekawitha. She said, I offer my soul to Christ the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and my body to Christ the Lord hanging on the cross. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray by your people's offering and pour out of them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we two are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with your greatest love. For your Son alone has just handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my Lord. In a similar way, when Sokka was ended, knowing that he is about to reconcile all things in himself to his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Keep us all in, be pleased to keep us all always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, for on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with yes. your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only Lord, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm a priest for two years, and in my for two years, the best thing I've seen for making disciples is the quad process. And about two years ago, we started the quad process here at Most Holy Trinity. And I would never have believed what has happened. We have about 250 people studying their faith on a weekly basis, and it's absolutely fantastic. So we want you all to know about the quad process. Maybe wherever you are watching and listening to this, maybe you might Google and, and start a quad, and maybe this can spread to the whole world. So. Paulette is here now to tell you all about her experience with the choir. Good afternoon. My name is Paulette Mowbray. I have just completed one year in a quad, and I want to share with you how joining a discipleship quad has impacted my life and re-energized my faith, hope, and love of God. Have you noticed that your church is very rarely completely full of people attending Mass? This is not just happening at Most Holy Trinity, but also at Catholic churches around the world. When Jesus walked the earth, he recruited common men to become disciples and to spread the good news. For 2,000 years, that has worked. Even in the 50s and 60s, a typical Catholic parish had a pastor and three assistant pastors. But the devil is working overtime to distract us. We have fewer priests being ordained to work in our parishes. Maybe we need to rethink our traditional silent witnessing of our faith. We may need to help spread the good news, become more like the disciples of Christ, and strengthen our personal relationship with God. Trust me, while I'm talking to you, the devil is whispering in your ear all the reasons why you do not need to get involved in a quad. The devil hates quads. When I first considered joining a quad, I did not feel I was the type of person that would be comfortable with or benefit from this process. I'm a cradle Catholic, attended Catholic grade school, attended public high school and catechism classes, married a non-Catholic in the church. 
I was married for 30 years, but stepped away from my faith for 25 of those years. Finally divorced my husband, then rejoined the Catholic Church. I never owned a Bible until 12 months ago. I felt I was not worthy of being a disciple of Christ, nor did I care to share my feelings about this with anyone. And being vulnerable or honest, that was the last thing I wanted to do with three strangers. Would I say the right things or just make a fool of myself? The opposite has happened. I love this process. I am invested in the Bible, in the Holy Trinity, in the history of the church, and in the apostles. I found out the apostles were as flawed and, and as imperfect as I am, in some cases worse. This whole experience is changing my attitude toward my Catholic faith. I found out I was exactly the person that God wants as a disciple. Being Catholic is now exciting. Before joining a quad, going to Mass was like going to see the same movie over and over again. I looked at the Eucharist like I was getting popcorn and a drink. Afterward, I would go home and resume my life. The next morning, I would get irritated with someone in the grocery store checkout lane or have some choice words for the person in front of me on the interstate for cutting me off in traffic. Now, I'm in the movie you're about to be. I met for the first time with my new quad last week. I am learning the role God intends me to play, examining the unique spiritual gifts God has given me, and finding my path to salvation. I have a prayer life that fits my schedule. I didn't know what a prayer life was a year ago, and I certainly didn't have one. I want to share the good news with others, and I'm excited about it. I am learning new aspects about the church and eliminating doubts and misinformation. There was so much that I flat did not know were misunderstood. My faith, hope, and love of God is growing every day. Being able to ask questions about my faith is refreshing. I am not bored. You know how you feel when you have just seen a really great football game? You want to find somebody else that has seen the game and you want to talk about it. Recall the great touchdowns and relive the exciting plays. Well, that is how my quad experience makes me feel about God. Very good, Paulette, and that's the absolute amazing thing about it. Everybody doing a quad loves it. So if you're out there, I invite you to Google the student and quad process. And please consider getting three other friends, prayerfully invite them to be part of a quad. Yeah, all the material is free and you can do it in any part of the world. And several people are doing it online because they're afraid of the coronavirus. So it doesn't matter how you do it. And people in their 60s and 70s are reading the Bible for the first time and they're so excited. So it's a great thing, and I strongly encourage it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Now, Dinah, your chance to win me some money. You know, she won her, called out her own name last week. Can you believe it? Now, uh, now my name. Oh, okay. Sorry, Father. Oh, good Lord. What's new? Oh, yeah. Jack Suckman is a great friend of mine. He is the Chief Financial Officer at the Silver Slipper, and the Silver Slipper is very good to our church. And his wife died of cancer some years ago, 
she and I used to swim at the pool together at the uh, Donald Snyder Center, and uh, I, I did weddings for many of his children. So, Jack, congratulations. Got a cute email here. A husband was advised by a psychiatrist to assert himself. You don't have to let your wife hinpeg you. Go home and show her you're the boss, advised the psychiatrist. Of course, the husband took the doctor's advice. He hopped in his car and rushed home. Then he slammed the door, shook his fist at his wife's face, and growled, Woman, from now on, you're taking orders from me. I want my supper right now. And when you get it on the table, go upstairs and lay out my best clothes. I'm going out with the boys, and you are going to stay at home where you belong. And here's another thing. Do you know who's going to comb my hair, adjust my pants, and then tie my bow tie? I certainly do, said the wife, calmly without ever looking up, the undertaker. Very good.